Everybody glad you're here? Did they not just sing the snot out of that song? Yeah, gum. Man, love that. Good to see all of you here this morning. So excited that you were here. I hope you came ready for church. Okay. Okay, we'll work on that. Uh, just a couple things. I want to. I want to just. I want to speak for a second. I want to share some stuff with you all. I know. Uh, I know a lot of you all enjoy the fact and consider it a convenience that we, we offer our, our service at 6 p.m. on Sunday nights when you're traveling, when you're on. And, and so we offer this online option, but I don't know that people really, really understand the, the depth and width in which that ministry goes out. And so really, I want to just shout out to those that are serving in the production team and the cameras and making sure all that happens. Um, we've had several moments last, I think it was two weeks ago, we had a gentleman come in and said, hey, I'm from up by the Canadian border, and I watch Real Life Church every week. You have been my church for about a year, and, and I finally got to be down here, and I'm so excited to be in service with you today. And uh, another person, another couple that uh, Aaron and I ran into out in the foyer, we were sitting out there talking, and they said, we, we are full-time RVers, and, and we've watched Real Life Church in Utah and the East Coast and the South and the North and the West and anywhere else that we can, we can where we are, we always connect with our local church. And I just, I, I want to just say thank you to those of you that watch online, just for a second. I mean, there's a lot of people in the room with me right now, but I want to just speak to you for a second. I want to say thank you for, for pouring in, for being with us. I pray it's a blessing to you. Our goal is to encourage you in Christ no matter where you are. That's what we do. And um, another cool story, we have several realtors in the house, and uh, we had a realtor this week that got a call, and there's a family moving here from Georgia, and... Um, that family came and they got just started in a conversation. Said, "So what was what was the what was it? Why Mountain Home? Why this area?" And and they said, "Well, we just love the area. Plus, we've been watching a church online for a while now, and that was the deal breaker. That was the reason." She goes, "Oh, really? What church?" And they were like, "Real life." And she was like, "That's my church." <laughs> those are my people right there. And so just for those of you that are watching online, thank you for pouring in at 6 o'clock with us every Sunday night. For those of you that make that happen in the back production team, I know it may seem like you're back in that corner and no one sees, but there are thousands of people seeing the gospel because you do what you do. So thank you guys so much. Let's give them some honor this morning. I have got to dive into this, okay? This, this week we are kicking off, well... It's not a kickoff. This is the introduction to the kickoff that's going to happen next week, all right? Pre-game, that's right. This is, this is us getting loaded and ready to go. I want to make sure I'm setting up what we're going to do. Aaron and I first had a conversation about this topic from a preaching standpoint. I believe it's been probably a year ago from the first time we had the conversation. And so um, I'm excited, to say the least, to dive into this that we're going to be diving into. But I want to kind of set it up a little bit, and I want to give you, I want to just, I want to check with you and see if maybe, maybe you've said any of these things. How many of you have said this phrase before? I'm trying to be a better Christian. Anybody? How many of you said it today? You know, it's somebody, maybe planning on saying it tomorrow. I don't know. Trying, I'm just trying, trying to be a better Christian. Um, what's another one that we do? I, I'm trying, I'm trying to, uh, what's another one that we do? It's a, I'm trying to read the Bible. I've been trying, boy, I'm trying to read the Bible. How many of you ever tried to read the Bible? How many of you love the Bible? How many of you are just giving me a Sunday school answer because that's what you're supposed to stay in church? <laughs> How many of you have tried to read the Bible and you're like, this is not for me. It's not easy. It's a tough book. It's not an easy book. And it's not one we like talk about a lot. I mean, you're like, no, we talk about the Bible all the time. No, you don't. Like, you weren't like walking through the produce section and been like, so Leviticus. <laughs> me too. Really? Really? That's what you. In fact, I want to. Show... How many of you know that Leviticus is the book of the Bible? Say amen. amen. Let's play a game. Don't worry. I'm not going to ask you about any content in the book of Leviticus. How many of you are relieved? 
So here we go. Let me ask you this. How many of you, and I want you to be honest, okay? 8.30 service is really honest. How many of you, other than knowing that it's a book in the Bible, have absolutely no idea what a Leviticus is. It's okay. It's all right. I promise no judgment. I'm trying to pray. Anybody done that one? I'm trying to pray more. I mean, I'm really good at it when I'm in trouble. How many of you are great prayers in trouble? Like that's when you feel closest to the Lord because it may be the only time you talk to him. We pray when we're in trouble. Blue lights in the rear view. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> like like you, you'd be singing this song. You can do all things but fail. Lord, I need you to go to battle for me because you never lost a battle. <laughs> I was doing 70 in a 45. <laughs> I'm trying to pray. I'm trying to pray. I wonder, I wonder, here's, here's what all this leads to. I grew up in church. I grew, I grew up in church, church. So Sunday school at 10 o'clock, worship at 11, Sunday night at 6, Wednesday night at 7. My dad was a preacher who loved evangelism, so we were blessed to get four to six revivals a year, which meant I was in church Monday through. Back then, we used to do, like, they used to do week-long revivals. So you'd start it Monday night and preach through the week. Now, they, now we kind of do revivalettes. It's like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we'll let you out. And, um, and so, but that's what I grew up in. So I was in, I was in, church, I was in church a lot. And I love love the local church. I love, I just love the church. I think, I think church is awesome. Like where else do we get to do this? Like every week we just come hang out together. You get good coffee, you get high fives in the foyer, your kids get to go learn something good. We have a good time. Like I, I, we have a good time, right? We try to have a good time at real life church. The music is exceptional. We, and so like, I love the local church, but I love Every local church. I love Sunday school when it's done right. I love worship. I love Sunday night service. I love, if it wouldn't have been for a Sunday night service, no one would have ever let me preach. But they were like, it's, it's Sunday night. You go ahead. <laughs> what that meant was the pastor was like, I'm exhausted. Will you please say a prayer? And so, but I got an opportunity to preach. So I love that. Wednesday night Bible studies and youth group. That's where Bob and I met was in a Wednesday night. He had this massive car that was bigger than anything in the County of Mountain Home, Arkansas, right now. Bob, what was that car? The Lincoln, 74, Lincoln. 74 Lincoln Continental. Some of you, some of you are murmuring out of experience and you're like, that's a big old car. Some of you are like, even the name sounds like a big car. Yes, it was big. I mean, we, after Wednesday night youth group, we'd hop in the car and go to Sonic. Go, we, it was, I love the local church. Now that I'm older and I pastor the local church, I get the opportunity to not only pastor a local church, but I get to help plant local churches in different communities all around the country. And we've planted them in Colorado and Oklahoma and Florida and different places where God's allowed me to, to speak into pastors and go, hey, are you, are you healthy enough to start a church. Can you do this? And let me give you anything that I have, any resources I have, any, any knowledge that I've gained because we were really blessed at real life. So how can I help you coach? But I'm finding some stuff out the more I work in the local church. And what I'm finding out is that in America, y'all love me, right? Because what I'm about to say could offend some of you. What I've found is that the church recently has done an incredible job of helping people fall in love with the church. And not as good a job of helping people fall in love with Jesus. Jesus. It's okay that you don't know what Leviticus is. A lot of people don't. It's okay that you don't know everything about the faith 
that you think you should. I would think most of us should probably still be in that boat. I am. Still things I want to learn about the faith. But I'm finding that finding people that have fallen in love with the word of God and the presence of God isn't easy as finding people who really like hanging out at church. It's not as common. You say, well, probably, Vince, it's, it's right from a ratio standpoint, it may not be as common. It may not be. And everybody's on a different path in the journey. But what I feel is like that we've missed some of the things that help us in that path. Like I believe that people want to study the Bible, but I also believe most people don't know how to study the Bible. You're like, hey, I want to study the Bible. And so you do what I call the flipping point. Anybody know what the flipping point is? And you're hoping that the Lord gives you a verse. The problem is, did you know there's an opportunity for you to stop on a verse that says, lo, there is a burning within my loins? You want that as your life scripture that you just flipped and pointed to? I hope not. And I know, I know some of you right now are like, Pastor Vince, the Lord spoke to me in a very direct way one time just like that. And I'm not discrediting that. What I'm saying is we can try to study the Bible or we can train to know how to study the Bible. We can try to pray better, more, whatever word you want to add to it, or we can train to pray correctly. We can try to be better Christians or we can just be obedient and be better Christians. What I find is that we have fallen into the trap of, well, God bless the effort. The Lord's going to bless the effort. And that's all well and good, and I think that he does, but I think that we've got satisfied that the effort is all we need. And I wonder sometimes if God just doesn't want us to accomplish the goal that he's laid before us instead of just trying actually achieving what it is. And so over the next, this is hard for me to say, over the next nine, nine weeks. See, some of you are already bored. You're like, nine weeks, God. Over the next nine weeks, we're going to dive into some individual things each week that if you apply, I don't, I don't get to make you I don't have that ability nor authority. If you apply these things, they will change your life in Christ. They, I just believe it. Now, they are not your salvation. Please don't hear me say that. They are not your salvation. But I also believe that I've seen a generation, myself included, at seasons in my life where my salvation was it. That's all I needed. That's all I want. Jesus, I'm going. How many of you are excited you're going to heaven? Say amen. I'm excited about it, but the most exciting thing that I have now in my faith is not that I get to go to heaven, but I get to take you with me. And if I stop at me and miss you, I still think I missed. I'm ex I am overjoyed. I am blessed among all men. I get to pastor this amazing church. My wife is incredible. My kids are better than yours. Um, <laughs> I'm, just kidding, I'm just kidding. Maybe some of y'all. I don't know. No, I, you love your kids the same way. I, 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 I'm blessed, man. I got two and a half grandkids. Yeah, the other one's due in October. I know what I'm talking about. It's two and three quarter grandkids now, but. And so, like, I'm blessed. I, I, salvation, God has been good to me, but as great as salvation is, it's not all that God offers. He has more for me. And I'm finding out as I get older, the more that God has for me is freely poured out Unless I get in his way. That's right. 
and man do we get in his way. Pastor Vince, I want to be closer to Jesus. I told you this is the introductory sermon, so I got to be careful how much I preach. But if you want to get closer to Jesus, I'm going to, get, I'm going to give it to you. You want the answer? I'll give you the answer. I'll give you the remedy for it. Stop doing the things that separate you from him. Quit. Cut it out. Stop it. I just can't. I have these desires. No, you're a child if that's how you live. <coughs> Toddler. It's playground stuff. I said, wow, that's pretty harsh, Pastor Vince. Listen, I don't want it to end of it. Because see, there's going to come a day. David, there's going to come a day that I get to stand. I will stand before God and I will give an account of every word I've ever spoken. That means every word I've ever said to you from this platform, I will answer for. And God forbid for your sake I miss. God forgive me for the times that I have. And so these things, as I look through this stuff in my life, I realize that I've been doing, I've done it wrong. I've done some stuff wrong. I want to read this. Therefore, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I want you to catch this last part. Knowing that in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. Your labor in the Lord you know, it's incredible to me that that word doesn't say your labor for the Lord. Because that's typically how our brains think, isn't it? I'm trying to read the Bible more. I'm trying to study more. I'm trying to worship more. I'm trying to do for the things I can do for the Lord, the things I can do for the Lord. And we've missed the reality that the true joy and peace and presence of God comes from being in the Lord, John chapter 15 talks about this, about abiding in Christ, this in the Lord, and then he pours it all out where it needs to go. I want to be a better husband. My job is to not run a checklist of things I can do for my wife. My job, if I want to be a better husband, is to spend more time in Christ and allow him to produce a better husband in me. That's how that works. Better dad? I can play catch in the yard with the best of them. Okay? I'm not great at video games. I'm horrible at, horrible at them. And I have this really toxic trait. I want to just see if I'm the only one. I have this toxic trait where if I suck at something, I don't want to do it. Anybody with me on that? Like, I literally turn into a toddler. I'm like, I don't want to play. Come play with me, Dad. I'm like, I'm not playing with you. Why? Because I hate that game. You hate the game? No, I hate that I'm not good at it. It's interesting. That, you know that's also why you don't finish reading the Bible? Because you don't feel equipped. That's why you don't pray more. Because you don't feel equipped. You don't make choices in your life that glorify God because you don't feel equipped. Because we, 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 we love doing things we're good at. It's when it's a fight that we step back from it. And so as, as we're walking through this, I think it was Aaron, we were talking about this sermon, and we, we mentioned the idea of running. Like, how many of you know how to run? Listen, you liars. Liars. I say it again. Liars. If this building caught on fire, how many of you know how to run? Okay, listen, you can get out. You, you're going to run over little old people to get out. You know how to run. Now, I told him in the first service, if a bear is chasing me, I know how to run. If a bear chases me, I know how to run. Now, my only problem is, if a healthy bear chases me, he's going to be able to run longer than I do. How many of you know that? 
Like there's going to come a point where I'm just like, it's fine. It's just fine. And I'm going to lay down and let the bear eat me. Okay. I may scratch him a little bit, but I'm just going to lay down because I won't be able to breathe. Anybody with me on that? You know how to run. But not very far. In your faith, in your walk with Christ, the reason things break down so quickly in your life isn't because you didn't know how to run. It's you hadn't trained yourself to run very far. You... You, you get a little bit, and you, this is too hard. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fall to my temptation. I'm going to bend to the world. I'm going to just do what I always do. I'm just, it's why people continue to go back to broken relationships. It's why we find the most unhealthy people to put in our life because they just, we just know how to deal with other people. Why? Because we're an unhealthy people. And that's what we do. And we just keep walking through the same cycle and then wonder. We're like, I don't know why this keeps happening. Because you didn't train to run any differently. He just didn't train to run any differently. So the next nine weeks, we're going to quit trying, and we're going to train. We're going to quit trying, and we're going to train. How many of you know that there is a discipline called silence and solitude? Anybody know that? Okay. This one's hard. I, I suck at this one. Because I love to talk. I love to hear my own voice. It's really sad, but it's, my, it's me. I'm being honest with you. I love to hear me. Even when no one else is around, I just sit on the front porch. Nobody to talk to. Bird. I don't know what I do. Don't judge me. You're judging me. You're not just laughing. You're judging me. I just sit there. Carl, drive by. Nice car. I didn't realize I did this so the other day. I'm trying to be silent in solitude. About by myself. Who am I talking to? I wasn't praying. I'm just randomly saying words that pop into my head, and I don't have to. This is not easy. I tried it. There are people that have got to the point where they can go sit for hours silent. I'm like, it's a discipline, so it's just like running. I, don't, I can't run very far. Okay, I can't, I'm, I'm, so I got to build up. So I'm going to go out on the front porch. I sat down there, sat down on the porch, Brent, sat down on my rocket chair on the porch. Whew. Rocking in the chair. Okay. Whew. All right, 15 minutes. Good, good. That's what I thought. I thought I had. I thought I got 15 minutes. I went inside and grabbed my phone, and it's six six minutes. Six. <laughs> it's not easy. Prayer. Next week we're going to dive into the the discipline of prayer and meditation. Oh, whoa, whoa, Vince. We meditation. We going. What are we doing here? You going to light some incense or what the heck? What are we doing? Third worship song. We've, I've already talked to Logan. We're not singing a third song. We're just all going to sit and hold our fingers and go, home, oh, see what happens. Just trust the Lord's going to move in that. No, that's not what it is. It's not what it is. It's actually something very specific in the Bible that we don't even think about. I mean, when, honestly, you don't have to raise your hand, but when's the last time you thought, man, I need to go just spend some time meditating on what God's trying to say to me? We don't, we don't do that anymore. We've kind of just cultivated it out of our structure as believers. And, and, and we wonder why we're not drawing as close to God or why we just love the things of God and not the God who created the things. Because we've stopped doing half the stuff that Jesus did. Jesus separated from, I'm going away. Where are you going? Just to the mountain. To do what? Just be by myself. Solitude. Jesus practiced this, and we miss it. Fasting. <laughs> Pastor Vince, I, I do intermittent fasting as a meal. I'm not talking about for your diet. That's between you and, and you. I, it doesn't matter to me. 
When's the last time you said, God, I'm, I'm going to sacrifice something I'm dependent on in order to draw close to you? Notice my sentence. I've got to stop or I'm going to preach that sermon. Something I'm dependent on in order to draw close to you. Worship and not just music. There's so many of them that we miss. And we miss them because, again, we've tried to make things a lot simpler. And I agree with simple. I believe the the gospel is very simple. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was a prisoner in a concentration camp, wrote a phenomenal book called The Cost of Discipleship. And one of the things that he states is he talks about salvation. He said salvation is a free gift. The Bible tells us that it's a free gift of salvation. Okay? We're so blessed to have this free gift of salvation. And he mentions that it was by the grace of God through faith that you are saved. It is it's nothing of yourself. It is the gift of God. Salvation costs you nothing but discipleship. Following Jesus will cost everything. Everything. And it's hard. And so I, I, I want to walk through some things, and I want to just make sure that we, I guess that we're on the same page as we walk into next week. Uh, I'm, I, listen, I'm going to give you a card. You're going to have some. You can fill in the blanks next week. There's going to be life group questions on the back of the card. You're going to have a, we're going to equip you. But you need to be bring, bring your Bible. Bring your Bible. And we can say this till we're blue in the face. If you don't have a Bible, please tell us. I'm not going to post it on the screens. I just want to give you a Bible. I want you to have the equipment that you need, the tools that you need. So, Pastor Vince, I don't know how to use the Bible. Interestingly enough, on September 20th, we're starting two classes. One is, what is the Bible? What is it? Why is it laid out the way it is? What is its purpose? Why does it matter so much to believers? The second one is how to study the Bible. Because I want you to know your tools. But let's dive in today. First thing, alignment is the issue. The reason sometimes we feel distant from God is nine times out of ten alignment. What I mean by that is God will have us chasing something. God wants us to seek after something. But we've convinced ourselves that the something we're supposed to chase after is different. And we never line up with what God wants us to be chasing after. Um, how, how many of you have kids or grandkids, Samen? So you understand this. You understand it because Bryn is six years old, and Bryn has this amazing love affair with rocks. She just loves rocks. Uh, she gets it from her uncle Dallas. Dallas likes rocks, and so Bryn Bryn likes rocks. And it doesn't matter. She'll go pick up a rock anywhere. She'll just grab a rock, and then she's like enamored with it. She's like, oh, Dad, 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 Dad. I'm like, Yeah, baby, I got a rock. I don't have the heart to be like, we live in Arkansas. <laughs> Everybody got rocks. She's like, look. And I look at him. I'm like, yeah, it's a great rock. She's like, it's, it's so pretty. And I'm like, it's actually a chunk of asphalt, Bryn. It's not even a real rock. <laughs> but she gets enamored by chasing that thing. But then there are other times where I need her to align with what dad needs her to do. And I'm like, Bryn, I need you to clean your room. I need you to go pick up your toys. She's six, so it's not like I'm not handing her the Lysol wipes or anything. Like, I just need you to go clean your, pick up your toys. <sighs> Can I go look for a rock? No, I don't need a rock. I need your room clean. But if I look for a rock, I'll be happy. I know, but if you look for a rock, you'll be disobedient. Some of you have been chasing all the things in the world to make you happy, and you're missing the obedience of God, and you're out of alignment. You can be a believer in living that way, chasing all the things. You say, well, how did we get there? I'll tell you what I think. I feel like a lot of times we're Christians, and, in, and I, I've been a pastor for 22 years now, and, and I had a guy tell me this in a conference room one time. He was talking about the maturity in this church, and he said, what we struggle with in our church, he said, is that we have a lot of people who have been Christians for 10 years. And I'm like, okay. He's like, no, no, let me, let me back that up. 
He said, we have a lot of people who have believed in Jesus for 10 years, but they got one year of Christian experience. They keep repeating that one year, nine times. Does that make sense to everybody? So like we learned what we needed to learn on the front end. It was like, that's good. That's enough. And we've been leaning on that little bit of knowledge at this point in our faith walk. And wondering why we don't handle the struggles the same, because the struggles change. So we've got to change. And it was really powerful to me. A, I didn't like the statement because I had to start questioning myself, going, Lord, when's the last time I dug into the word to grow? And not just prepare a sermon, or not just prepare a lesson, or not just prepare to counsel with somebody. When's the last time I just opened your word and said, God, I want you to grow me. I want you to stretch me. God, I need, I, I need this from you in my life right now. When's the last? And it had, been a, it had been a season. And then just digging back into that discipline and Bible study and, and, and going, man, I love this. I love the Bible. I love it. People come and ask me, Joe was talking the other day, and I said, Joe, this is what you need to pray. You need to pray that you fall in love with the Bible. Pray that God just make you crazy about this book. And you watch what begins to happen in your life. So I had to get myself, I had been chasing things that were godly things, but not the thing that God wanted me to chase. I was out of alignment. And we can do the same thing. We'll keep chasing all this stuff. Well, I'm going to try to preach. I'm going to try to pray better, try to sing better, try to read better, try to do this better, try to do that better. And God's going, you know what? Actually, actually what I want is I, I need something different in you. And so, um, does anybody have an iPhone? You got an iPhone. Okay. Wow. My, there's nothing weird, right? Okay. Is this, is this yours? It's a purple case, bro. It's, it's good. Well, I can't open it. Yeah. 8675309? Why is that familiar? All right, so the iPhone has this really cool thing. How many of you know what AirDrop is? Yeah. If you don't know what AirDrop is, AirDrop is this thing on the iPhone. Or Apple products, you can do it from your computer or whatever. But AirDrop is this thing where so long as I'm close and you have your AirDrop on, I can send you things. And you're like, yeah, Ben's rocket science, isn't that called email? No, like it's instant. Like I don't have to, address, I just get close to you. The problem is, if I'm not close to you, you don't have the same access. And nor do I. The way we get out of alignment isn't because of the things we do. It's the lack of access we have to the source for the things we do. I've got to stay close to God so that I know what he wants me to chase next. I know what steps he wants me. To. Well, but Pastor Vince, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this. What if God wants you to pull back on some things and focus on this thing? so that you can end up being the person you really want you to be. I think that we oftentimes, we so often, we try to get God with the whole bless my efforts thing. And, well, I'm trying. I'm trying. You know, trying, the problem with trying is trying is relative. And y'all ever tried to lose weight? Try to lose weight. How many of you have tried different ways to lose weight? Why? Because it's relative. How many of you have been really good at some ways but not good at other ways? Like there have been moments in my life where I'm like, I'm trying to lose weight. What does that mean? That means I'm only drinking two milkshakes a day. Because <laughs> I was at like more than two. And so it's relative to me, to you. And, and, and so it's, it becomes like this thing that no one, I don't, I'm trying to pray more. What does that mean? Does that mean like, you said one today? Like, I don't know if that's trying to pray more. I don't know. It's so relative. The Bible tells us to strive to be as Christ, but there's a difference between trying and striving towards something. So alignment is critical. 
Listen, because we, what we do is we try to depend on our will. I try to depend on my strength to get it done. I, I can do it. I, can, any, any, I mean, I, yeah, you are. Most of us are prideful people on some level. Say amen if I'm right. Okay, we, we, we believe we can. And so Paul addresses that to the church here in, in Coloss. And, and as the church at Coloss is trying to do these things, Paul goes, hey, if, if with Christ you died to the things of the world... Why, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to the regulations of the world? Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't touch. Don't handle. Don't taste. These boundaries you've put around, according to human precepts and teaching, these have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism, but severity to the body. I want you to catch this. But they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. You know what that means? Let me give you the Brindley version of that. Me telling you to stop it isn't going to make you stop it. You don't have the willpower to do that. I don't have the willpower to do that. I've been, God's been blessing me because I, I've, I've wrestled with losing weight, and, and it's working right now. I've got, found something that works for me, and this is not what the sermon's about, so please don't, don't clap or anything right now because that's not what this is about. I, but in the process, I had to really find out some things about me. Because, see, before my excuse was always someone else. Lord, I, look, hey, babe. I think I need to lose some weight. She's like, okay. I'm like, so when do you want to start going to the gym? She's like, what? I'm like, what, when do you want to start? Like, do you want to, like, we can do keto. We can do vegetarian. We can do whatever you want to do. What, what do you want to do? Because I need to start losing weight. What do you want to do? Because I need to start losing weight. The, literally, those are my words. Some of you are like, oh, no. What's he about to say? And I started realizing that I did this to not only my wife, but I was doing it to my kids. Man, I need to lose weight. I got a six-year-old. I need to be around for that six-year-old. That's super unfair pressure for a six-year-old to be the reason I get healthy. That's unfair. There's actually a term for it called codependency. It's also horribly toxic. Horribly toxic. God convicted me of it. I went to Jennifer. I apologized to her. I said, babe, I need to apologize to you. I said, for a long time in our marriage, there have been things that I have said I needed from you which subtract from you and add to me, and that's selfish. When in reality, my call as your husband is to amplify you and to lift you up, not take from you. So I'm sorry, and I won't do that anymore. And I said, Lord, I want to be healthier. I want to preach for as long as my body will let me. If I'm 90, they will put in ramps for me right here. And I will waddle down those little ramps and I will preach on the floor and on the stage. But Lord, right now, I can't because my hips hurt and my knees hurt. And after Sunday afternoons, my feet swell. And I'm, I, God, I got to fix this because you deserve a better version of me than what I'm giving you. Remember that first scripture I said? Your work in the Lord, not for the Lord. My work in the Lord changed everything around my life. My focus changed everything. I had to get in alignment. I was out of alignment. I was chasing something for the wrong reason rather than chasing it for the right reason. Well, I was doing something, I was out of alignment. And so what happens is now, because I've added some discipline in my life in ways that I had pawned off on other people before, we do the same thing in our faith. Well, Pastor Vince brought a good sermon this week. What did you read in the Bible this week? I mean, it was a good sermon on Sunday. Did you review it? Did you dig back in the Word? Did you take some notes? Are you listening to somebody during the week? No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just going to let Pastor Vince be my spiritual vessel. 
I can't. It's not fair to you. I won't. Because when the world hits your life, when the chaos, the shadow of death hits you in your valley, you're going to need more than me. You're going to need a lot more than me. I will tell you this past summer, had it not been for knowing the promise that, but God, who works all things to the good for those who love Jesus and are called according to his purpose, had it not been for that promise from Jesus Christ, I'd have quit 15 times this month, this summer. I'm not talking quit church. I'd have quit everything. Because every day, And yet, no, you see, I love Jesus and I'm called according to his purpose. And if those two things are true, then my God won't fail. And I'll stand in it and I'll stand on it. But the discipline has to come. You see, as much as alignment is off, discipline brings access. It brings presence. God, I believe, is so tired of me trying so hard and just wishing I would come see him. Just wishing I would be present with him. Just spending time with him. Whether it's silence and solitude or whether it's time of worship or his word or praying or whatever it is. He just wants time with me. And as I give him time with me, he then multiplies that into blessings in my life that I don't deserve. That I, I can't even tell you the amount of things that God has poured out on my life. Not because I'm exceptional. Because he is. I struggle with all the same things you struggle with. All of them. I promise. I'm walking this out too. Some of these disciplines, I'm learning with you. Don't think this is a master class on how to... No, this is me walking with my friends going... How do, I, how do I dig deeper into what God wants me to be? See, I, as I read this, you see where Paul writes this to the, the, the Galatians. I know, Jared, you're doing an exceptional job. I'm trying to hurry. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows... That he will also reap. For the one who sows his own flesh will reap from the flesh. They'll reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. It's very common scripture. And let us not grow weary of doing good. Let, don't, let's not get tired of doing the right things. For in due season we will reap. I think a lot of people want to stop reading there. In due season we'll reap, Brent. It's coming. Lord's good. It's not what the verse says. The verse says, in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Since the beginning of creation, a farmer has never grown anything. Never. The farmer's job is to cultivate, prepare, have things ready to go. And then it comes a point where that farmer will put a seed in the ground and then the hand of the creator takes over from there. Your salvation, your salvation was a hand of the creator moment. It was a gift given to you by God. The depth of your walk that all depends on how much you're willing to cultivate the soil. What work are you willing to put in? What, what things are you willing to change in your life? I want to give you these thoughts going forward. And then I'm going to let you out of here. First thing is this. These disciplines over the next nine weeks are not a punch list. Check, check, check. No. It's not just a better way to do things as a Christian. That's not what they are. It's not what they're for. They should not be viewed as laws. So you're going to hear me talk about praying, 
Pastor Ben said, I have to pray. Well, the Bible says that, but I'm not going to beat you up about it. The Bible doesn't say you have to go in silence and solitude. It's just a discipline that you can add. They're not laws, but they do provide access. And most of us, I believe, that's what we truly want with God is access. The last thing is simply this. You need them in your life. You need them in your life. More more than you know at this stage in your life, there's going to be one of you or multiple of you that go through a storm in this coming year that you don't know it's coming. You're going to get blindsided. And in times in the past when you've been blindsided, you haven't known what to do. You've just been overwhelmed. The next nine weeks are to fill your toolbox. They're to get your first aid kit ready when the blind side happens. So next week when you come back, bring somebody with you and bring a bigger box because we're going to start filling that thing with tools. And you're going to grow. And you're going to see Jesus in a way you never have. You're going to see people in a way you never have. But I'm handing it to you. It's up to you. I'll walk with you through the whole thing and love you either way. But man, I want you to go deeper. I want you to go deeper. We handed out our life group cards and the majority of people on our cards stated, I have a desire to go deeper with God. All right. Let's get it. Bow with me, church. Father, I love you. Jesus, I thank you for your grace and for your mercy. I thank you, God, that although salvation is a free gift, you challenge us. You call us out to walk on water call us into the fiery furnaces sometimes the lion's den but in those circumstances you never leave us and so Lord help us to lean on that that regardless of the struggle regardless of the chaos in life you're there help us to return the favor return the obedience and be there for you. Be close to you, have access to you, and grow in you. And we ask all this in Jesus' name.